first group are the ability factors. Now, keep in mind as I talk through these, the, these are not, uh, these factors are not ones that we just made up. They're derived statistically and confirmed statistically. Okay? Now, under the, abil the ability factors, the first two are absolutely fundamental. And that is the content validity of the training and the transfer design. Now, by content validity, what I mean is the extent to which what's being taught in training fits the, the trainee's needs on the job. Very core, very fundamental. Um, unfortunately, I will tell you that from uh, as we looked at data from all around the world, typically this this factor, the, the score, is kind of at a mediocre level at best. So that the training is not well matched to the job requirement. And there are a lot of reasons for that, you know, they, in, in, uh, in recent years there's been more as organizations feel increasing pressure on their budgets, more and more they go to uh, kind of what we call hand training programs, you know, off the shelf rather than custom developed. Um, and, and, and so the content only somewhat matches the needs of the trainees. Um, so if we want transfer though, we obviously have to get the content right. We have to make the content of the training fit the job exactly. Another key reason uh, that, that this is low is that we know that a, 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 in many instances, organizations do not conduct needs assessment. It needs assessment is the process by which we, we figure out exactly what the right content is. <clears throat> but having the right content alone is not enough. Uh, also have to teach it in a way that, um, that trainees will know how to apply. What, what's learned, and that's what we call transfer design. I mean, think about it yourself. How many times have you walked out of a, uh, of a training program and said, well, well, you know, that's really, I mean, that's really interesting stuff, but I have no idea how to use this. And that's because the transfer design was poor. Um, and, and, and so it's very easy for us to teach a lot of content, but if we don't put in practice and application into our training programs, then trainees will have no idea uh, how to use it. And I tell, and, and what, I, what, I, what I will tell you and I tell trainers all the time is if we don't get content validity and transfer design right, then transfer is dead on arrival. We can forget talking about the rest of it. And that's where we push training organizations first, is to get those two right. <clears throat> but let's assume for the moment that we have the content validity right and we have the transfer design right. The third factor in this group is what we call the opportunity to use. Now, th this is one of these factors that you might go, well, wouldn't you have an opportunity to use the training? Well, we like to think so, but, but in fact, it's not unusual for trainees to say no. They don't have the opportunity. I remember I started my training career um, doing computer training. This was a long time ago, too many years to to think about. Um, and I remember, uh, for example, one training class that seemed particularly uh, 
uh, unmotivated. And so I started quizzing them as to why. And, and, they, and what I found out was the reason that they were attending this computer training class was because um, their budget for, the, for their fiscal year was about to run out. Um, they had some extra money. And so they sent them all to training, but they weren't going to get their computers and get this software for six months. Well, you know, think about that. Um, you know, how much would you remember six months after you went to training about how to use computer, a certain computer software? Not much. So the opportunity to use wasn't there. Or maybe we take, we, we take, um, if we move to a, uh, even a management level, and we, we may have somebody that, that we teach a new problem-solving process to, but we don't give them the opportunity, once they get back to the job, their boss won't, uh, won't let them uh, take charge of that. And so they never have an opportunity to apply what, what they learn. Uh, the fourth factor here is what we what I call personal capacity. And this is getting to be a bigger and bigger issue. Personal capacity means do the trainees have the time um, and uh, energy and emotional energy to do things differently than they've been doing. And here's the dynamic that we see increasingly. As organizations get more and more lean, uh, you know, flatter, fewer employees, each employee has more to do, more to do. And I, I, what I've heard trainees tell me is, you know, I really, this is really, wonderful stuff, and I really like to use it, but I have too much work to do. I don't have time to, to slow down and, you know, and, and go through that learning curve to do it differently, even if it will be better later. <laughs> My boss is expecting me to get things done, and I don't have time to try this. So we, have, so we have to be conscious of this in the organization and, and give employees um, the, the, the time to, uh, to apply their learning. So these four together, get the content right, teach it in a way that they know how to apply it, give them an opportunity to use it, and make sure we balance the workload so that they, that, that they do, in fact, have time and, and energy to try it. New, new things. Together will give a trainee the ability to transfer the learning. Let's move to the right side of this slide and talk about motivation, which is the second major category here. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with, with a, a very basic but well-researched uh, uh, theory of motivation called expectancy theory. And it, but expectancy theory says uh, that there, there are two parts to motivation. And the first two scales represent these two parts. The first part is what we call the effort to performance expectation. And this is, in, in simpler words, uh, is if we want somebody, to, an employee, to be motivated to um, use their, the, our training, they have to believe that if they try, they really can do it. You know, I, I like to use the example, um, you know, if, if, if you came to me and tried to motivate me to become a marathon runner right now in my life, um, I would tell you, uh, and you can't see me 
full body, but I would tell you that uh, my marathon days have long since gone. I don't care how much I try, I am never going to be a marathon runner again in my life. <laughs> it's just not possible. So, but on the other hand, if I got serious about it, I'd like to do a 5K, you know? And, and, and so I might could get motivated. I at least believe that if I tried hard enough, I could, in fact, accomplish a 5K. And that's the same thing with transfer. Employees have to believe that if they try to apply it, that they can be successful in doing so. That's the first case. But the second part of motivation, uh, according to expectancy theory, is, okay, I'll use my 5K example and say, well, okay, I could do it. I think I could, get, I could accomplish that. Oh, but why? <laughs> What's it going to do for me? Um, you know, I really don't, there's no reward to me for running a 5K. In other words, there has to be an outcome that the employee values as a result of achieving that goal. Um, so, so if they might believe that they could transfer the learning, but if nobody cares, and, I, and I'm sorry to say that a lot of our data suggests that, that organizations have a pretty laissez-faire attitude toward, uh, toward transfer, and therefore if, if they don't get any reinforcement, then What's the point? And so those first two scales are very fundamental to motivation. The third scale is learner readiness. And this measures the extent to which people uh, prior to learning, uh, prior to the learning event, understand what's expected of them in learning. The fourth scale uh, and we know, by the way, from adult learning research, that adults, prior to learning, they, they like to know what they're going to, going to learn, why they need to learn it, how they're going to learn it. Um, how many of you, if any of you are trainers, how many of you have had the experience of employees uh, walking into the training class and saying, I have no idea why I'm here. They just told me to show up. And, and so they have no, ex nobody has set expectations for them. Nobody has told them why they're going. And that's what this scale measures, is the extent to which uh, they were pre prepared for the learning. <coughs> the fourth scale is a general measure of motivation to transfer. The fifth scale is what we call performance self-efficacy. Now let me tell you about one organization I was working in to illustrate this scale. Um, it happened to be a government agency, and they were they were installing a new, <laughs> and they and they had a lot of um, clerical folks who who uh, were operating an old computer system, fairly complex system. And these people were scared to death of learning that new system. And the reason that the, is that, that, that we discovered is that for a lot of them, um, a lot of them were just high school, high school